Okay. Servus, everybody. Um, today I will talk to you about uh, I believe it when I see it, teaching computer vision with uh, uh, visual programming. But uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, Giulio, and um, I actually come from uh, northern Italy, but uh, I have recently moved here in Austria, in the beautiful city of Graz. And uh, what do I do in my life? So. I'm a software engineer and uh, I build things for the web. I'm a front-end developer. And uh, I, I build interfaces that allow people to perform their work better. And uh, I also build the tools. And uh, so the, my professional career brought me uh, working for a company called Flux that uh, um, is building uh, a tool for uh, creating circuit boards on the web. But uh, the reason why I arrived there, um, it's because of a lot of things that I built. And today, I wanted to talk to you about one in particular. And uh, it all started when I was studying at uh, my university. Uh, I studied computer science in the uh, Kafoskari University of Venice. And uh, there, I was uh, a bit known uh, <laughs> as the web and front-end guy. And for this reason, uh, uh, one day one professor reached out to me and uh, asked me to um, collaborate because they wanted to build uh, a software, a tool, to allow the uh, high school students uh, to come to the university in uh, some days and uh, do some experiments with computer science, with computer vision in particular, and uh, learn how programming works. And uh, the thing that we wanted to um, show to the, um, to the students and make them try was uh, a concept called uh, the AF transform in computer vision. That is a very uh, interesting algorithm that is used to detect the line in images. Imagine that uh, in a, you have a, a line uh, defined by the set of point in a XY space. You can see that for each point, that point corresponds to uh, an infinite amount of lines um, with a, a certain parameter of uh, slope and distance from center. But instead, uh, if you have more of those uh, points, um, all those uh, uh, distance, uh, all those distances from center and angles will uh, have a maximum in one point. That will be the parameter of the line that we're looking for. You see that it's already a bit of a complicated um, concept, uh, um, even though it's used quite simple math. But uh, to understand it, uh, you have to see it visually. Because uh, it all starts with uh, the recognition of an uh, image from your webcam, uh, uh, of uh, a sort of joystick made of plastic with uh, a pink strip that is easy easily recognizable by an algorithm. The second step is uh, using that pink strip, uh, using sort of, of chroma key algorithm to determine the pixels that uh, are part of the pink strip and uh, the pixels that are not. Why are we doing this? Because we want to detect uh, what's the angle of the joystick. And uh, then we can isolate those pixels to see <laughs> what is part of the line uh, or not. And we can then uh, transform uh, all the pixels of uh, this strip into what is called the half space. It's a bit technical and uh, it's not the focus of the presentation, but uh, what we end up with is uh, a con uh, two parameters that are the angle with which I um, rotated the, uh, the joystick and the distance from the center. What do we want to do with uh, those two numbers? We want the users to uh, play a little game so that uh, uh, they can use the joystick in front of the webcam, like winking it through the air, and uh, play a game uh, with this joystick, uh, which angle is recognized through computer vision. And, uh, but here there is a problem. You see that it's a lot of uh, steps uh, um, to perform this algorithm. First detect the pixels, then detect uh, uh, the chroma key, the, the angle, uh, the half space, and so on. And uh, doing it all through code, uh, it's not that simple. 
And uh, years ago, I have um, seen this video called uh, The Biggest Myth in Education about uh, Veritasium, a very famous YouTuber, that uh, talked about the kind of learning that people have. Why did they do this? Because uh, I saw that all this algorithm was a bit too complicated for uh, uh, being explained in three hours. So I tried to make it easier to understand. So this video say that uh, people have uh, different kind of learning styles that can be auditory learning if uh, you are uh, hearing somebody uh, teaching you something, visual learner if uh, you are uh, somebody that uh, prefers visual metaphors and illustrations, reading writing learner people that understand better by reading explanation on a book and kinesthetic learners people that uh, uh, learn better by doing but the entire point of the video was that uh, at the end a uh, very nice study showed how actually this doesn't really matter because uh, it's not a matter of uh, some kind of uh, uh, learning style that you prefer but actually the moment that you use uh, all your senses, uh, all the auditory, visual, reading, writing, and kinesthetic to learn something better, you will remember that thing better. If you remember back in high school, you will surely remember doing uh, uh, chemistry and physics uh, laboratory experiences, such as uh, uh, understanding uh, uh, how the double slit experiment works, uh, uh, burning materials and such, and uh, learning things on the book, and then uh, hearing about it, uh, and then uh, seeing with your eyes and doing uh, those things, uh, at the end, uh, it's a way with which you remember uh, the, the thing that you learn about better. And uh, we tried to use this same approach, because uh, understanding and remembering works better when we are using uh, all our senses and we try to use this principle but <laughs> if we look to programming if you want to do computer vision stuff uh, it's not very simple because there is a lot of code that is everything but visual and uh, we didn't <laughs> want the user to go through this especially when you want to see the output you have to use libraries that are quite complicated and uh, you must see numbers for outputs and uh, this is not very good for something that has vision in the name. You want uh, your algorithm to have uh, some kind of visual representation uh, if you want the users to understand what is going on. And um, regarding this, uh, there is a beautiful uh, article wrote by a guy called uh, uh, Brett Victor um, that was a designer by Apple, uh, that worked for Apple uh, that described uh, how we can make programming something that is more understandable and learnable. And uh, he was talking about this concept of showing the state. If you have uh, an algorithm that does stuff and has variables, if you show the values of the variables and what they are doing, the user will understand way better what is going on if you show visually the state of the application or at least showing the numbers of what's going on in real time. And uh, also, I try to look into different examples of uh, visual programming. One of those is Scratch, that is a, a visual programming tool developed by MIT, uh, in which you have, to, um, you have several, several procedural blocks that you can uh, um, uh, drop, drag, drag and drop with your mouse, and uh, you don't have to worry about syntax and stuff. And uh, then uh, I looked into other examples, like uh, Synthedit, that uh, is a visual programming tool uh, for building uh, synthesizers, software synthesizers, and uh, sound effects. And it's very cool because uh, every block represents some kind of uh, signal processing unit. And you can have literally the audio output that connect from one block to each other. So you can understand like if you are f uh, physically connecting uh, cables uh, between your equipment. And uh, if we want to move uh, into the um, more visual world. We also have Blender, that is a 3D rendering tool, uh, 3D rendering and modeling tool, that uh, for defining materials has this uh, concept of blocks. Uh, for example, I can have a texture that goes into a warp effect, uh, into a normal map effect, and so on. And uh, I can program what I want to happen seeing uh, in 
each block what is the input and the output visually. And this is way more powerful than um, using, for example, a Python API if we want to learn and understand in real time what, what's happening. So uh, I ask myself, as I showed you before, we have this algorithm with uh, very well-defined steps uh, and blocks. And uh, how do we build uh, a user interface for the students to um, program this algorithm? It just starts with uh, some kind of palette of blocks that is like uh, a sidebar with all the blocks, all the operations that are available, so that you can quickly see, ha, huh, this is the thing that I'm able to do. And you don't have to dive through <laughs> API documentation for it. And uh, you can uh, grab and drag and drop those blocks uh, and uh, combine them by drawing lines so that the input of one goes uh, into the output, the output of one goes into the input of another. And you can also create uh, complex structures with uh, a lot of different blocks. But not only, you can uh, um, have uh, numbers or images and see them in real time on the blocks. In this way, in real time, you can see that uh, there is a chroma key block that takes into input uh, a normal image and outputs a mask. And this is very powerful because you can uh, uh, see what the algorithm is doing uh, without having to use debuggers uh, or uh, things like that. And uh, also for interactivity, uh, we use the webcam as a video input and uh, we have the possibility to have uh, inputs with sliders and so on. So you do can move the slider and see that uh, the application react automatically. And uh, how do we build this? Uh, we want uh, uh, the blocks uh, to be some kind of uh, programmable. So uh, we want the, the students to be able to program the f function for these blocks. And to do so, we take uh, the editor of Visual Studio Code and we put it in the browser um, with uh, the, this extension that is called Monaco Editor so that the users are able to write uh, JavaScript code uh, directly into the, into the browser and have a modern editor uh, that allows them to use uh, auto-formatting uh, and uh, code completion intelligence and so on. And uh, we have also other technologies uh, at our disposal, such as Bubble, Prettier, and TypeScript that run directly into the browser so that they don't have to uh, write uh, and type the code, ma, uh, but they can uh, directly write uh, code that uh, uh, is safe uh, and uh, it's a way better user experience than writing something uh, that uh, uh, may fail completely. And uh, also we can use Bubble uh, to prevent some stuff from happening. For example, if we know that some student may write an infinite loop, we can uh, instrument the code in a way that uh, if it detects uh, an infinite loop, uh, it automatically bails out so that uh, the user is also protected from <laughs> doing bad stuff. So uh, now I will uh, like to, to give you a quick demo of the application. And uh, if you want, you can uh, also try it right now on uh, this link. And uh, let's load it right here. The application runs on the browser and uh, it's built uh, with uh, React. And um, we, are, we have uh, uh, the, our block editor, our palette, our code editor, and uh, the visualization of uh, what is happening right now. You can grab uh, a camera input block, and uh, uh, to perform our chroma key, we grab our RGB to YUV that converts the color into a uh, different color space. We can take, for example, the output frame from here, and connect it here. So the clicking here, we can see the different color space and uh, how it works. So what we are using uh, as a joystick is a uh, uh, question later. Do you have a question? Yes, it's this one. cvedu.vercel.app. And uh, what we will use as joystick is a this as a ladder because I don't have anything else. And uh, so what we're doing now is uh, taking this chroma key block and uh, give it in as an input, our frame, and clicking on it, we are able to see the code for it and we can uh, write some code. So what we want to do is uh, select all the pixels that are within a certain radius. 
So we extract our yuv that are saved into your yuv frame dot data dot e, and we can use uh, all the Visual Studio Code features like the code completion and uh, also the multiple cursors. And in this way, we can uh, perform our chroma key algorithm. Uh, let's do it. So let's calculate our distance from u, that is our u minus our point. Let's do the same for v. We can also, we can also use multiple courses because it's actually due to the code. Now let's calculate our distance, that is uh, the with the Pythagoras theorem. It's uh, our distance in u squared plus our distance in v squared. Yeah. And now we say that uh, we, on we write on our mask that if the distance is less or equal than the radius, we write a positive pixel, so 255, otherwise zero. We can press uh, play, and uh, if we add uh, our controls here for the radius and the in color input, if everything goes to plan because there is the demo effect, okay, we can try to find uh, uh, the color for this highlighter. So, uh, since we can do this in real time, we should be able to direct, okay. You see that uh, in I can select the color that I want to extract, and the moment that I click on that, I can adjust the radius, so how many colors will be matched, and uh, also the colors that we want to extract. So it's this one, perfect. And now we see that uh, if we rotate this highlighter, it uh, only detects the highlighter so that uh, uh, we can quickly remove it from the background. Can also turn a bit down, perfect. <laughs> we can also do other things such as uh, composite images and uh, we can uh, send our highlighter into vacation. If we have our frame input and uh, we add another image here, get the solution for this one. Okay, we can send our highlighter into vacation. <laughs> but uh, the real interesting thing that we want to do now is uh, detecting the line, as we said before, with the half transform. So let's get this half module that uh, take as an input uh, our mask with the pixel, so the, uh, the pixels uh, of this uh, highlighter. And uh, our why you frame because uh, it will weight uh, uh, them with uh, um, with how uh, contrasting is this uh, highlighter. We can uh, here write our algorithm, but since we don't have much time for it, we will click on solution. If it works. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> it always works in production. <laughs> oh. Okay. So here we can finally see our accumulator. What does this mean? It means that. Uh, um, in the y direction, we have the uh, distance from the center, and in the x direction, instead, we have the uh, angle of the of the line. It means that uh, um, for each pixels, it tries to say, okay, this may be part of a line or not. And uh, once we have this representation, we can find what is the maximum pixel here and determine uh, what is the actual uh, direction of the line uh, of this highlighter. And uh, if we take another block here that is the draw line that is useful for the bugging, we can uh, uh, first we have to get the maximum accumulator. 
Okay. And uh, we can see already that solution. It's able down here to say what is the angle that we rotated the uh, the eyeliner with. And uh, if we get the angle here and the frame, we're able to see also visually what is the direction of this eyeliner. And uh, we built this algorithm by seeing what the steps are and being able to see all the way uh, what is the output of each block. So we know that this uh, converts the color, this one uh, isolates the pixel of the uh, highlighter, this one tries to reconstruct uh, all the lines that are present, and this one instead gets the uh, maximum probability of uh, the, the line, uh, calculating the degrees, and this one draws the line instead. And uh, this is pretty much what the uh, experience uh, of the students that tried this is. But we say, well, <laughs> uh, we could do a bit better because uh, there is not really an incentive uh, in uh, finding what is the line uh, uh, of this highlighter. So what, are we, what could we do to make this a bit more interesting? And uh, for this reason, we also beat a little game that is a block here that we can uh, input the angle found uh, by this uh, half transform uh, here. And once we click on the game, uh, we can uh, draw a little car with our highlighter. And uh, the goal uh, that we have here is to uh, try to avoid the obstacles. And uh, all this uh, is just done uh, winging uh, uh, an highlighter in front of a webcam. And uh, of course, there is no gameplay, but <laughs> <laughs> That's what the budget is. And uh, yeah, so um, summing up, what happened uh, is that uh, this was uh, unfortunately built in the end of 2019. And uh, so it was the worst time possible to invite schools and university. But um, so I didn't see it in action. In fact, this is a random picture of our um, computer science laboratory. So pretend that this is actually one of the sessions in which they use it. Uh, but uh, they recently used multiple times. And um, compared to the previous approach that was uh, writing MATLAB code uh, and uh, seeing uh, output every time that you press play on the ID, the, apparently, from the feedback that I received from the professor, the, the students had a lot of fun. And uh, actually, I hope that they learned something uh, while uh, using this program. So summing up, um, as I said, uh, starting from principles, and uh, the principles that I want to leave uh, you with, if uh, some days you will design something like that, software like that, is uh, first of all, show the state. Don't uh, hide things uh, uh, under a terminal, under rerunning the application every time. But if you want users to understand what is going on, always show uh, the state of the system, maybe visually, maybe in, uh, with audio, maybe with an animation. But this is really important if you want, to user, if you want the user to uh, have a spark in their brain uh, and realize the connection between things. Uh, another thing is uh, throw the parts on the floor. It means that uh, if you want users to be um, proficient uh, with your tool, uh, what you want to have uh, is some kind of uh, uh, way for them to easily discover what the system uh, is capable of. Like when you uh, take Lego and you throw all the parts on the floor, and you can quickly see what you need and grab it from the floor. And the last one is uh, if you give uh, uh, interactivity in real time, you're giving superpowers to your users so that uh, uh, they can see how the system reacts uh, without having to close the recompile and run thing again. And uh, yeah, my time is over. And um, thank you for following my presentation. I, f I hope that it wasn't too heavy. And uh, if you have uh, any questions, I'm uh, here.